Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Intention. My name is Kaiser, which is a game called Killer Frequency, developed and published by Team 17 Digital. So, courtesy of Team 17 for providing us the key to cover this game on the channel. But the Steam Store page reads Killer Frequency is a first person horror puzzle game set in 1987 that puts you in the role of a late night radio talk show host in a small town America whose callers are being stalked by a mysterious killer. Came out to Steam on. 1st January, 1st June, mind you, 2023. So just about a couple of days we are watching this on YouTube. That's it, let's jump into killer frequency settings really quick. Not much to it, I don't think it would be important. But good thing that there's FOV though. We will see it sets itself to 60 and see whether it needs adjusting or not. Opportunity to move the camera. Okay, let me see. That seems a little close. So let's see how. Oh, this is <laughs> the wrong setting, mind you. Display has to be here. Yeah. Actually, I play above 90. So let's see. Yes. Slightly better. See what happens if we go all the way though. I don't see a problem. I think it looks much better. Inter object interaction. You can hold two objects swap between the middle mouse button, I'm guessing. F to drop objects. R to throw. Hold in uh, hold to place object. Release when in a valid location. There's nothing in there we can see actually. Let's see. F to drop objects. Huh? I don't think this one we can drop. We can just we can drag. Move it. Oh maybe this we can. Go oh, invalid. Ah, uh, there you go. That's a valid one. Let's see. F to drop. But I can't drop it actually. Wait, you know what? It works. R to show. Let's try that. I mean, I wouldn't call that a throw. Let's pick up this one up for our shield. It did say we can pick up two objects, right? It hold two objects. Swaps between the so objects between hands with. Okay. Oh, that's sweet. You double protect it. I don't think this protection will help us with what I'm hearing. Come on, we can open this. You know what? Let's get this stuff out of our hands. Okay, you can only throw in your right hand. Right hand. Also drop with only right hand. Got it. See what that did. Turn off the power to the building here. Inspecting objects. Press E to begin inspecting. Hold the left mouse button and move the mouse to rotate objects while inspecting. Press E to exit. Okay, fam. I'm guessing it's supposed to go in here, right? Oh, no, we're not. Right, elevator. Only press C to crouch. Why do we need to crouch, though? Oh, 
Opening doors hold the left mouse button and move the mouse in the direction indicated. Oh, it swings the it outwards. Oh my god, the 80s were so high tech. I mean, this is not the... There's a certain type of door that closes by itself. This one, it seems like a proper door and it, yet it swings in and out. Let's see, what is this? Probably some doctor's and writing. Probably some doctor's notepad, actually. be bad right something Peggy huh hear what I thought I heard someone yelling or I don't know how Forrest is this a joke no I, <laughs> I almost swore I heard something oh and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up you probably just heard some cats outside cats you know four legs whiskers tails not dogs <laughs> I know what a cat is but I mean does Gallows Creek have a straight cat problem or something not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously? Do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment for each show. And he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want to... What's that one? Next panel to enable disable. Okay, let's see what's this. Okay, that's what we did. Oh, okay. Maybe they meant that. Oh, it's still on? Okay. Do I need tutorial? Let's do the check. All right, fine. Let's get through this. Alrighty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Buckle in, folks. We're about to hit some tubular rents. Let's start with mm -hmm. record playing. <sighs> Okay, grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy. Let's see, what do we want? The flow? Uh, Forrest, you Let's need to that. grab a record and stick it on the turntable. Relax. How do I do that, though? Is this not a turntable? <laughs> the record box is on the left, oh, and go. the record player is on the right. Pick a record and stick it on the turntable. Then hit play. Got it. Easy. I've heard this Great. song before. Now turn it off. At least the intro it is. All right. Up next, phone line buttons. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. Oh, there you go. All right, Peggy. Ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Yeah, it's a riot. Great, and button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. You mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm, is there a Peggy mute button? They haven't invented it yet. Now, come on. The Peggy button is the third one on the phone line. I labeled it for you. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Press for Peggy. This is your brain, Forrest. <laughs> Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. You guessing this one? Sound blaster? You did say easy, though. 
Sound Blaster. Front of the desk to the right. Front of the desk to the right. This one? Front of the desk. It's the thing covered in buttons. Oh, okay, there you go. Sound boy. There we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. I thought it'd be this one, but I think so. Sliders should be right in front of you, like directly in front. Maybe this one? All right. Oh, this is the uh, to be all working. All volume. We done? Can I get it? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? Ah, uh, should not encourage you. I knew you had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Nope. And don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Okay, you're live in three, two... 189.16. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16 the scream before we start taking your calls tonight on gallows creek's only late night phone in talk show i need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening guess that scream this is actually one of the station manager's better ideas here's how it works i'm gonna play you a scream then you call and guess that scream we need you to guess why they're screaming did they stub their toe saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one. That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Peggy, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest. And you're the one at the mic, so... I used to go out all across America, and now I'm just screaming into a mic in a backwater town. Jesus. Come on, Forrest, just do it. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Oh, God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Oh, yet the screen of falling off. Clear the chance. Let's try the first one. <sighs> well, folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Fried dough? Just call in at 555 239 KFAM with your guess. Now, Here's some music while you get dialing. Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song, 1980X. Well, that's actually neat. Oh, God, Forrest, that was amazing. <laughs> Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. How the hell did I get into this mess? <laughs> Lighten up, Forrest. That's gonna be the highlight of my week. 
play the music and they immediately know which one that's sweet actually. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Time to turn the music off. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Welcome to the show, Leslie. Are you calling in to guess that scream? As a 911 operator, I bet you may have an educated guess. What? No! Look, I found a body and I need your help. <laughs> 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not gonna be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Leslie, I'll level with you. I find this hard to believe, but I'll hear you out. What exactly is going on? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and... I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Well, is, is anyone else at the station? Anyone who can help you? Or, or who might be responsible? No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God. Wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three. But Officer Gunderson is on leave and can't Oof. Leslie, do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself, let them know what's going on, and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. I'm a radio talk show host, Leslie. I talk to idiot people about their idiot ideas. I'm not a 911 operator. Why me? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, yeah. there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Hell, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's gotta be another way in. There's got to be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he... You know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but... 
I didn't really look up close. One second. Oh, I think I might be sick. Sorry, Sharon. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Please don't stare at me. <laughs> Please don't stare at me. I... Oh, wait. That might be them. I, I, th I think I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do! Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? There's no way that I can do this all night. I mean, sure, we got the deputy out of the cell. But what if the person that did this decides they aren't done? What do we do then? Then we do our best. We don't have any other choice, really. I guess we don't. Come on, Martinez. There we go. Just gonna sit you in your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. That's a good idea. We don't want to take any risk right now. Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I Oh, she did, huh? What? Oh, no. My car! My car is on fire! What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? No. No way. This can't. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling. Whistling? It can't be. Oh, my God. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? With that mask. How the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The whistling man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead! He's... What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way! Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Shit, we need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think! Window. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any... Uh... Just reach into your pocket there, deputy, and... Yes! Got him! Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked too. out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But wait. How am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. Deputy Martinez surely carries a gun, right? Could you use that? Deputy Martinez's gun is missing. I guess the whistling man must have done something with it. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I... Shit. Oh, she's screwed. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. There must be a weapon lockup in the station, right? Could you grab something from there? I saw it earlier, but as you might have guessed, it was locked. But maybe one of these keys I got earlier will help. Let me see. No. No. No! Uh, shit! None of the keys work. Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Which should I take? 
Oh, all could go wrong. I take the baton. You can always trust a beating stick. Got it. I'm just going to grab the rest of my milk on Tindal. Yes, I. Wait. Do you hear that? No, I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Be careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Okay. Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. Just lean on me. <gasps> yep. There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Good luck, Leslie. That's one brave woman. God, I hope she makes it through this. <sighs> you know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. That's a big 10-4 there, good buddy. I, I'm guessing you made it to the car then? Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Deputy Martinez and the passenger seat still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! Get off of her! Get... Hey! No! Let go of it! No! Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Leslie, drive! Martinez! God damn it! Are you all right? D do you think you got away? Forrest, he slit her throat. You need to get to Henderson, Leslie. We can't let this happen again. Peggy's right. We've all got our part to play now. How long do you think it's going to take to get help? Gallows Creek is a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. We'll do our best to keep everyone safe until then. Thank you. Just try to work together. Do what you can. All right, both I... God damn it. I need a minute. I'll be out of range soon. I'll radio back as soon as I can, once I got the cavalry. Take care, Leslie. And be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. <sighs> Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. We're gonna get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind, or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. It's David Scopo with Moonlight. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. 
went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just did. Okay. What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. The police cornered him, and he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people. Oh my god, that's so best. sad. 35 at best? 35, yeah. It's a school night. And what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah, before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big gas could pump that up to 10, 15, easy. 5,000 on the low end? We can only dream of that. Five million. Oof. Million? Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet. I guess. Yeah, I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. And with that, that brings us to the end for this intention look. I to click at key left frequency. Game that's developed and published by Team 7 in digital. Came out the same on 1st June 2021. Now it's currently on sale with an introductory offer at 20% off. The price that I'm going to give you will be after the 20% off, which will last until let me see why it's actually close the window. Okay, regardless of that, the prices will be as follows. £16.79, £19.99, where is US? Why can't I find you? Okay, $25.20 Singapore dollars. I really can't see the US. Ah, there you go, $19.99 US dollars and where's Australian? $29.20 Australian dollars. That said, if you wish to pick up Killer Frequency for yourself or even add to a wishlist, you can find the link to the Steam Store page in the description box below. Definitely gonna be playing more of this. I've been three. And let me hook. By the way, the introductory offer will end on 16 June, so you have quite ways to go. If you wish to pick it up for yourself. Until the next episode of Killer Frequency and Attention, my name is Kaiser. You guys take care. I'll see you then. Bye bye.